The Elder Scroll V Skyrim, fifth installment of the Elder Scroll franchise, developed and published by Bethesda, released in November 11, 2011, setting place in Skyrim province, northern part of Tamriel. You are playing as Dragonborn on a journey to defeat the world eater Aldrin. Welcome on my review on this nine-year-old game. You got captured while crossing a border. A dragon wreck havoc in Halgen. You escape. Then you go to Riverwood, where you were asked to get help from your old Balgruf to protect the village against the dragon. After that, you go to Whiterun, winning your old Balgruf's favor by helping his wizard kill the first dragon, then find out you are a dragonborn, aka the some kind of human that has dragon blood. Anyway, you got summoned by the Grey Beards, which basically hermit full of old dudes perceiving the voice or shout or ooh. Mm. You were taught about the shout. Then you need to finish the test from them by getting some amulet in ancient tomb. But the amulet that's supposed to be there has been stolen by someone. You meet the person who stole the amulet. She introduced herself by the name of Dalvin. And she just gave the amulet to you. Wait, what? 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 To prove that she's on your side. Wait, what? Why don't you just wait inside the cave then? I, I don't know. She explained that apparently she's in hiding. Because she's being chased by the Talma? For being one of the Blade? Some kind of imperial secret service? Which has been disbanded according to some kind of treaty signed by Talmor and Empire named White Gold Concordat. Mm, okay, and most of them are already dead. Also, because of the White Gold Concordat, Talmor can roam Skyrim freely. Next, you follow her. And after seeing firsthand that the first appeared dragon is in fact Alduin, which is depicted as the devourer of the world. Now trying to resurrect the dead dragon in the burial mound in Kansgrove. After that, then you and Delphine try to deal with the resurrected dragon. Delphine think that Talmor knows something about this and then ask you to infiltrate Talmor Embassy while looking for proof that Dragon Crisis is their fault which is apparently not instead you find out that they are chasing a guy named Esper who knows something about this Dragon Crisis that so not coincident was Delphine's friend then she asks you to find him first before the Talmor you go to Riften find him in the sewer once out of Riften you and Esper meet up with Delphine in Riverwood and apparently, Esbern did know something about the dragon, and he led us to Sky Heaven Temple. There, he looked at the relief inside and concluded that in order to defeat the dragon, you need new shout. Then, you meet up with Greybeard once again, asking about the shout, but apparently, they don't know about the shout. Instead, they told you to meet their master high in the peak of the mountain, right in the throat of the world. Once you reach Throat of the World, you meet Parthenax. Unlucky for you, the shout that you were looking for is not taught by him. Instead, it's the first shout that developed by the men, not dragons. Hence, you need to find out yourself via Elder Scrolls, the main title in the game. After asking around, you finally find a clue, and the one who knows about Elder Scrolls in Skyrim is Septimus Sickness. After talking for a moment, he said that it was inside a Dwemer ruins. Once you reach inside the ruins, then suddenly you end up in Black Reach. After that, you take elevator to some sort of Dwemer tech. Once you break the puzzle, 
there lies the Elder Scroll. You then bring the Elder Scroll back to the throne of the world and use it. When you are using the Elder Scroll, you can see how the ancient heroes using shout to force the dragon to land and then defeat Alduin by banishing him with the Elder Scroll. You are banished. To the present, sucks to be you. After using the Elder Scroll, Alduin finally showed up. With new shout that you just learned, you defeat Alduin, but he managed to escape. Then you are trying to chase him, but you don't know where he goes. Only his lieutenant knows where. In order to interrogate him, you need him captured alive. And apparently, Dragon Reach in White Brown was built to hold a dragon. So, we go to White Run, then ask the Alpal group for help. As long as you make sure White Run secure from the attack both from Imperial or Stonefolk, he will agree to help. And soon after, springing the trap by calling one of Alduin's lieutenant with shout, you capture him. When you interrogate him, that Alduin ran away to Sovereign Guard via Skuldaven. But in order to reach Skuldaven, you need to fly, and he agreed to help you reach there in exchange of his release. Well, you had no choice but to agree with his terms. Then he sent you to Skuldaven. At the end of the school dungeon, you're gonna facing a dragon priest, and after you defeat him, you use his staff to open a portal to Sovereign Guard. Once you at Sovereign Guard, you realize that Alduin has making havoc there by eating the dead soul, which trying to reach the Hall of Elder. After you pass through the mist and pass the test from Sun in Wellbone Bridge, you finally meet with three ancient heroes that agree to help you defeat Alduin. After several shout spectacle, you finally face Alduin for the last time. And with the help of three ancient heroes, you finally defeat Alduin forever. The end! Well, that was one hell of a long ass story. My personal takes on the main story, honestly. Well, I enjoyed it a lot. The thing that I like most in the main story though, is when you were tasked to make peace treaty from two opposing sides in the civil war. Basically, you were tasked to be a mediator. Well, I like it, because you don't need to pick a side in the civil war. For God's sake, you are dragonborn. Your personal objective will be the defeat of the world eater Alduin. Not winning the goddamn civil war. Well, even though you cannot rally those two opposing sides to unite and help you to fight against the dragons, well, at very least, those two won't hinder your progress to slay Alduin, instead spend their resource on defending against the dragon rather than continuing the civil war. Well, that's win for me. I like this kind of stuff happen more often in any kind of video games. What I mean is that since when the world is exists prior to player involvement in the case of Skyrim, the Civil War, so that even though the world feels revolved around the player character, but the world doesn't exist solely for the player character, even more mind-blowing this game, is that you had personal objective as Dragonborn that is bigger than taking side of two horse quarreling about territory and ideals. Yes, staying neutral because you had your own problem and you can make both sides agree. Well, this is something different. Make peace, not war. Even the war, war, war never, never changed. changed. Except the opponents, I guess. The Talmor Embassy. It's the most awkward of the bunch. First, the Thal, Jarl Balgruf's steward, talking to me as he don't know me at all. I'd be like, wait, what? Hey, it's me, Dragonborn, the one who's being sent by Jarl Balgruf to defeat the dragon in White Run. Yo, what the fuck? Then 
since this mission is supposed to be sneaky and I'm not building sneaky character, I end up making a lot of buzz in the embassy. But after the incident, I feel like nothing happened. Palmer won't chase me because of my failure for being sneaky when doing the mission. I think this is a missed opportunity though. Well, personally. Okay, next, let's talk about the DLC first. Dawn Guard is the first DLC for Skyrim, which starts with words from random guards about a group of vampire hunter, the Dawn Guard. Then you check for Dawn Guard through Spring Canyon. On your way there, you will meet with fellow someone who wants to join the Dawn Guard. Together, you continue your journey to the port. Inside, you will see Isran, the leader of the Dawn Guard having argument with one of Sander Vigilant about vampire stuff, which apparently hate vampires so much that even Sander Vigilant think he is a radical. Then Isran asks you to go to Dim Hollow Crypt to see what the vampire is trying to do there. Once you are there, you will find that Sander Vigilant from before already dead, killed by the vampire while exploring Dim Hollow Crypt. After that, you'll find a hall with some sort of altar in the middle of it. Once you clear the puzzle, a stone monolith will show up with some different vampire inside it. Then she will tell you her name is Surana. She asks you to take her back to her home at Castle Polycar. Inside the castle, you will meet Harkon, Serena's father. Here where the story will branch out. You either accept Harkon's gift and become a vampire or decline then you will get banished out of the castle. Well, me personally in this case, I choose to side it with the Dawn Guard and deny Harkon's gift. You are prey, like all mortals. I banish you. Once you go back to Fort Downguard, you will see that vampire attacking the fort. After the attack quelled, talk to Isran about what you have been through. Then he'll give you another task. This time, you need to ask two ex Downguard to help. Get to their location, help with their whatever favor they ask, and then back inside the castle. Then you see three of you getting turned undead to making sure that you are not vampire. After that, you were asked by Isran to talk personally with him in the upstairs. There, you will find out that Serana, who is a vampire, is standing next to Isran. Then she will tell you everything, from the Elder Scrolls she had to her father problems, who went crazy about some sort of prophecy about controlling the sun, so that the vampire don't need to be afraid of sun anymore and will start war with entire mankind in Tamriel, hence she asked Downguard to stop him. Iran doesn't believe her, but you make him agree. Serana told you the first step to help her, to read the Elder Scrolls. She had an idea to ask some moth priest to read the Elder Scroll. Iran saw one before in Skyrim, but won't help to search. Then you went to track down the moth priest which led up to his last location near Dragon Bridge and apparently he's being attacked then held hostage in a cave nearby by the vampires. After clearing the cave and make the moth priest back to his hands, you talk to the moth priest named Daxion about the situation and ask him to follow you to go to Fort Downguard. Once there, you ask him to read the Elder Scroll that Serana has. Within the Elder Scroll, he read about Auriel's bow and the prophecy about the rise of the Dread Lord, and apparently you need two other Elder Scrolls. Serena knew her mom has one. The other 
well, you get it from the main story of the vanilla. Next, you and Serana went to cast Polycar, this time through the back door. Uh, by the back door, I mean the sewer. To reach the courtyard, which apparently has been abandoned. There, a puzzle needs to be solved. After the puzzle solved, a stair appeared that lead to the secret room, where Serana's mother doing research. And another puzzle to solve, which lead to creation of portal that connect to Sol Karn. And it can only be entered either by becoming a vampire or pay the toll by offering part of your soul that trapped in a gem to the ideal master. After that, to the soul can we go. In the soul current, you finally find Serena's mother, Valerica, that has been confined in some kind of ruins. Then she explained more about the prophecy Harkon believed and asked you to put down the confinement. Once the confinement put down, you follow her where she put the Elder Scroll. With slight interruption from a dragon. Once you get the Elder Scroll, now you go back to your realm out of Soul Card. Back at Fort Downguard, you will find Dexion. Well, blinded because he neglect the preparation required. But there is another way for you to be able to read the Elder Scroll. By performing some kind of ritual that includes moth in it. Then you go to Ancestor Glade to perform the ritual. After that, you read the Elder Scroll you get from Valerica. Inside, it shows a location named Darkfall Cave to get the Aureal's bow. Inside Darkfall Cave, you will meet Night Paladin Galavor, one of the last Snow Elf. He explained that the cave is in fact Aureal's temple, and he need your help to kill his brother, Arc Curate further via Weisrein in the Chantry's inner sanctum. After a long journey to pass through all the initiation of the Way Shrine, you finally at the inner sanctum, where you will meet our curate further. Then he speaks that actually he is baiting someone with prophecy to bring in true vampire here for its blood. After a tough fight, he finally explained that he actually a vampire and is the one who responsible in destruction of the chantry. And Auriel, his god, is not protecting him from vampirism. He seeks revenge against Auriel using his bow and blood of a pure vampire by creating the prophecy that Harkon believed. After one last fight with Ark Curate further, now he's finally dead. Then you explain to Night Pilot in Galibor about what happened, and finally Auriel's bow is in your hand. Back in Fort Dawnguard, you talk to Isran and start preparation to attack Castle Polycarp. Then, at Castle Polycarp, you storm the castle, kill all the vampires, then you face Harkon for the last time. Before the fight, Harkon gives you last chance to side it with him. Then you will fight him till death with help of Serana and Oriel's bow. Finally, Harkon is defeated and Dawnguard main quest is done. Okay, first, let's address the elephant in the room. The quest for you to be able to read the Elder Scroll. Uh, does this really necessary? Like, for God's sake, at the main vanilla quest, your character just read the scroll at the throat of the world. Why now you need to get your ass through all the hustle just to read the Elder Scroll? Why? I think, personally, this quest is unnecessary at best. Even though in the wiki state that it's because the lexicon Septimus gives you. Uh, well, you can get it once he's dead. Or better, before you give him back the lexicon. Heck, in the wiki also stated that if you use Elder Scroll, your screen will go black momentarily. Just like what happened to Dexion. I totally confused here. Well, this is my main problem with this DLC and it's major inconsistency in my opinion. Next, why all the main protagonists and antagonists on this DLC is stupidly radical? Isran is so hating vampire, he got kicked by the standard vigilant for his idea. 
even though he's right. And don't make me start with Harkon. He comparable with the Isis in Skyrim. Like seriously. He wants Vampire to rule the Tamriel while making every single one in the Tamriel start Vampire hunting. Because of one event alone. What the hell is in his head? And then Arc Curate Theater. Oh my god. This is even more stupid. He's mad at his own god for his own stupidity for getting bit by one of his own initiate? What? How the fuck you gonna avenge what your god did to you? Turning all to vampire? So you were punished anyone except the god, the one you were mad at. Then the location. Two main locations for this DLC are on the edge of the map in the opposite direction. Just why? Just to piss off someone who loves walk like me. Well, at least I enjoy Serena though. Especially her point of view even in the face of someone who tries to kill her. She keeps calm and keeps trying to explain but not forcing her opinion. Not to mention listening to her parent problem give me chuckle every time. Well, parents will be parent I guess? Personally I don't know if it's just me. But I feel this DLC has the longest or at least longer than the vanilla main quest chain. Then Red Fire. Just finish quest from Yarl in Parkrid, Mortal and Dawn Guard. Then they'll give you permission to buy a plot of land for you to be your homestead and build your personal manor. Yeah. Also you can adopt kids now. I don't know. Why adopt while well, you can marry someone in this game? I'm a dragonborn is infertile, perhaps. Well, the point of this DLC? Uh base building. Nothing else. Just build your homestead but one base feel more crazy in balance than the other. I'm talking about Winstead Manor with its hatchery. Great potion with Salmon Row, his crab, and silver side perch is like turning on infinite gold cheat. It's so damn broken. Still, this is the best manor in my opinion though. Dragonborn DLC start when you encountering some cultists attacking you, while accuse you as fake Dragonborn. Once they are dead, you can loot a letter stating name Mira and vessel named Northern Maiden that came from Ravenrock Souls time. Next, you go visit Windhelm to meet the ship captain that stated in the letter, Yaln Salt Sage. After you talk with him and make him agree to help you, now we go to Salt time. Once you are set foot in Ravenrock, you will be greeted unwelcomely by Andril Arano, Ravenrock's second counselor. He asking you a question, but when you try to answer the question and mention Mirak, he looks kinda confused though and mention Earthstone. After the talk, whether you went to Earthstone or sleeping in bed, you wake up while working in Windstone. Near the location, you will find Temple of Mirak where a lot of people working on it while there is someone who looks like trying to asking the worker to listen to her. When you talk to her, she explained that this is Mirax doing and she trying to help them. Then she said that some of the people of her village were brainwashed by Mirak, while she somewhat immune to the brainwash thanks to certain amulet she had. After that, she asked you to help her to look for explanation on what exactly happened inside the temple. At the end of the temple, you will find a black book. When you try to read it, you will teleport it and you finally meet Mirak. That kinda surprised with your presence. After some flexing, he sent you back. Then you explained to Freya what happened. And then she told you to follow her to meet her father in Skull Village. There, you will meet Storm. Freya's father, and after some explanation, Storm asks you to go to Sharing Watch to learn new shout to free the other people of Skull working on Windstone under Mirak's brainwash. Once you get the shout and free the people, back at Skull Village, Storm will ask you to cleanse the rest of the stone, and also told you to go to Dark Elf Wizard Neloth to learn about the Black Book. 
In Tell Me Train, you will meet Nelos uninvited, and he explained that the black book is in fact belong to Hermes Mora, one of the Daedra. There is one other book in the Dwemer ruins nearby. Then you and Nelos go to the ruins of Ndardak together and find out that the book is sealed. Thankfully, Nelos has been studying the ruins, so that after you restore Steam to where the book reside, you finally get the other book and meet with Hermes Mora himself in his realm of Apocrypha. Here, you need to find the way to learn Mirak's power against him. Hermes Mora will gladly help you because apparently Mirak is rebelling against him. As long as you pay with small price of the secret of the skull by sending Skull Shaman to him, you are back to the Solsheim. At Skull Village, you explain to Storm what happened and what needed to do in order to defeat Mirak. When you finally restore all of the stone from Mirak's grasp, Storm finally ready and face Hermes Mora himself to give him the secret of the skull and paying the price with his life in exchange for the last work of power to challenge Mirak. Reading the first book you get, you will be sent back to where Mirak resides. After getting through the maze and finish the puzzle, you face Sohatar, Mirak's personal dragon, and force him to help you using the shout you get from Hermes Mora and fly with him all the way to the tower where Mirak is. After tough and multiple stage battle, finally you defeat Mirak and then he killed by Hermes Mora himself for his rebellion. After all done, now you're back at Soul's time. Honestly, I enjoying this DLC compared to Dawn Guard, because I enjoy walking the new place around, the new map, the new biome to explore, land full of ash, because of non-stop ash rain from the Red Mountain. For Mirak though, well, he is typical villain who is trying to rule the world like any other standard villain. Then Skull People, I'm more intrigued with them being monotheistic, like seriously, when they just praise single entity of godly being, while the rest of Tamriel is polytheistic, praising the all maker instead of whole pantheon that even create a civil war in Skyrim? Apocrypha? Oh my god, who the heck had this idea to create maze with such of Lovecraftian in it? Even the monster, heck, even Mira's mask is so Lovecraftian. But I kinda hate the monster, more being an annoyance when I'm trying to get True, the maze. Stop it, you dumb tentacles! Then here comes Hermes Mora. Right before the start of the journey to Solsheim, I finished a quest where I helped Septimus Sickness to get Dwemer Artifact. That in fact, a Okma Infinium that belonged to Hermes Mora himself. After I get it, he addressed me as his champion and asked if I'm gonna work with him again, even though I reject him. Lo and behold, in this DLC, I'm working with him again, and honestly, it feels so awkward. Heck, even the conversation between me and Hermes Mora also talked about this. This is the most awkward situation in history of me playing video game. This game successfully making me a hypocrite. And finally, yes, I can ride a damn dragon. Yes! Woohoo! Not just ride, damn it, but also controlling it. Kinda. Just, just look at it. Well, even though the control is a bit weird though, but still, I'm so much enjoying this DLC, I even don't know what to complain. Skyrim gameplay is a somewhat both blessing and curse. Blessing because it's simplicity. Well, I bet 12 years old kid had no problem playing this game. Skill system that easily understood and relatable, like you just doing any action that related to that skill over and over again, or reading certain books, or pay someone to train you. Heck, even they have a college exist here for you to learn the skill, and I love it. And then there is a perk system that, eh, just pressing a single button and you magically get stronger. Well, you know, the usual RPG progression system. Also, the level system now follow your skill instead of usual XP base. I prefer this system any day rather than the XP base. Then it's curse because for me at least it lack of depth. 
What I mean by depth is your move set is predetermined by pressing one single command and can only be expanded by pressing two buttons and that you need to unlock within the skill tree. For example, you just pressing left click to swing the sword. Holding it will create strong attack that will have different effect depending on where you press the movement key. While parry or blocking the enemy doesn't need timing to execute, just take the perk and done. No need to master timing and such. Meanwhile, in the magic side, maybe had a little depth to it because of decent amount of spell, but most of it just stronger or weaker version of the other spell. Once you understand how the magic works, well, nothing else to learn except which enemy weak against what, then just spawn the spell. The favorite system in my opinion is hit and miss though. It hit because it creates some sort of shortcut for quick change of equipment or magic that you're trying to use and you can also put unlimited amount of stuff as favorite. It misses because it still pause the game. That means it kind of break the immersion in the heat of the battle. Well, at least for me. But still, it's better than having no shortcut in the game. Then comes the crafting system. There are three crafting systems with skill and one that doesn't come with skill. Smithing, alchemy, enchanting, and cooking. Yes, I include cooking as crafting. Well, it's very basic though. But honestly, it's very exploitative, really. For example, just as I said before, having three kind of ingredients that can be raised easily in Winstad Manor's hatchery, it can easily make you rich. With skill? Oh man, I hit the point where no alchemist in Skyrim could afford this potion in full price because of the merchant gold limit. Honestly though, I guess this is some kind of foolproof method for developer to not make the player getting rich early. Not rich early doesn't mean people will not find a way to make this game broken. Plus 1436%? Wait, what? 250,000? Are you fucking kidding me? This game crafting system is very easy to be exploited. Well, and apparently this game still had a lot of glitch that still exists even from 7 years ago. Like this stupid smithing animation that still exists? And I'm playing with the special edition, like oh, what the fuck? There are a bunch of other videos talking about this, I suggest you guys watch it. Respect to those guys who are trying to broke this game because I won't. I'm, I'm trying to play this game as it should be, even though it's funny sometimes. And makes me question that the Bethesda is just milking this game and not even try to fix it. Oh my god. Then the cooking. I don't know man. This is the missed opportunity for me. Because usually food act as a uh, what? Long term temporary buff? But here food is kinda useless in the late game though. Overshadowed by alchemy and potion. The only thing I use is uh, venison stew and nothing else. Except if I use I need mod. Which makes you had needs to be fulfilled like food, water, and sleep. While the enchantment system is nice addition on the crafting to pop up your skill beyond your character limitation, but for a very long time, as long as you wear the equipment. The UI. <laughs> I know this game was created for a console in mind, okay? I know that. But how many times I misclick a choice, and the highlight is not helping at all. Damn it! No wonder people use custom UI. Whew. There are a lot of variety of enemy. From normal human, animal, prehistoric animals, demon called Daedra, dragon, undead skeleton and droger, a literal troll, vampire, werewolf, even a Ghost? Like what? I even started the quest by literally talking to a ghost. Are you kidding me? This is hilarious. Skyrim God Race are so cool. Bethesda really is love God Race. Anywhere I go, God Race. My main problem is sometimes God Race show on this side with more light. That doesn't make any sense. That's not how light works. Hey, no, 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 no. I keep confused on where the light is coming from sometimes. The environment though. Oh, this is the reason I enjoy walking game like this. 
diverse biome from forest to tundra, swamp, hill, mountains, not to mention snow and ice. Then when you look at night sky, the stars and Aurora Borealis, man, as someone who lives in the equatorial region, video game is the only place I could enjoy seeing that. Heck, even perhaps for my entire life, not to mention that Tamriel have two moons. Now that is the pinnacle of fantasy or sci-fi, because Mars had two moons. Maybe one day we could see something similar in the future if Elon Musk dream about getting man to the Mars is rich. But for now, stick with the fantasy. Dungeons in this game are crazy diverse, even though it's end up grouped into cave encampment like abundant tower of war to beautiful gorge in the between cliff. Wow! Look at that! And so on. Then in the dungeon, there are traps. They won't make me finish this dungeon with leisure, at least for the early part of the game. It's in Takil. Damn it. Oh yes, kill cam. Hell yes. Just look at it. Oh damn, it's awesome. Look when he jump at the dragon. <laughs> Minor git just got out. Sorry. But I still confused on how it triggered though. For me it feel and seems random. Sometimes at last enemy it will trigger, but sometimes it won't. Even though I know it doesn't really make sense in real combat, just looking at it make me feel the power fantasy. This game's head quest is hit and miss. Sometimes it's boring fetch quest, gather this amount of this, go to this location and kill the bandit there, please send this to this person, and there's a freaking treasure hunt too, with a very vague map and get test in this location i mean like okay some other quest though had its own unique story with tons of lore like siding in civil war which personally i am not trying to pick side storm club led by ulfric which i won't call them racist but more like nationalist after being stabbed in the back twice by the imperial first after helping imperial fight the outmarried dominion on great war Imperial agreed to Altmere Domain demand to ban Talos worship that is revered so much to North in Skyrim and for Ulfric, he sees it as a betrayal when they signing up the White Gold Concordat. Then Ulfric offered to free Markhart from Forsworn in exchange for the Nords to be allowed to worship Talos again. Then Imperial agree, but unbeknown to the Imperial, after Ulfric free Markhart, Talmor knows this and forced the Imperial to arrest him or risk for another war and some people see this as another betrayal. Then Imperial also has Talmor in their side. Now they are the racists in this game, seeing human as below them, even striking Empire first in the Great War. What is not helping is that the Emperor signing treaty that heavily sided to the Talmor even after winning on the last battle. There are also lots of other things you can do. You can join the Thief Guild, the Dark Brotherhood, the freaking companion and make you a werewolf. Not to mention a quest helping the Daedra. And there is more that I can't explain every one of them. I know this sounds stupid, but is this a toilet? Well, I know this is some trivial stuff, but I believe those people at Bethesda surely have strong sense in detail. Like, look, look, look at this shit! I'm sure this is a toilet stall inside a fortress. Or is it just me? I don't know. Now look at the armor set. Damn! Look at those! This and this! <laughs> Ebony set are the best armor! No, 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 no. You cannot change my mind on this. Look at the silver lining! Look! Look at this engraving! <laughs> Throw the Daedra armor out of here! Just get it out! Ebony is the best! Alright. Now let's jump into stuff that pisses me off. Uh, why some armor shows a lot of skin? Uh, I I'm sorry, I maybe not live in cold area, but it's fucking snow everywhere. But this armor? Well, 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 well I know it may look sexy if female wears it, but I think staying alive has more logical sense than look sexy in Skyrim. Then character creation. 
not very aged well. For 2020, especially after a game like Monster Hunter World with its crazy detail on its card creation. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. it doesn't age well. But at least the character creation is easy slider, but I give credit for that. And what the hell happened to the face? They're like someone using makeup to whitewash their face. While their entire body is still tanned, I don't remember it like this when I played this game first time years ago. Although way before Special Edition even released. Is this because of Special Edition? Then the follower have tendency to get stuck. Especially Lydia. I don't know who caught this, but why the heck my follower keep getting stuck in a simple place where she can just walk down or get out of there. Not to mention she keep blocking the door and sometimes she got lost or missing. Okay, to be fair in this case, mostly because I'm using unconventional route, but at least she will magically teleport in my location if I wait. Then the kids. Oh my god. Why is the kids in this game are so cute and so annoying at the same time. In one hand, there are kids that seems like their parents don't teach them to behave and they just being freak every time they talk to me. You what? And it's even more annoying that they had some kind of invincibility mode that make me can't hit them. You privileged shit. But on the other hand, there are kids who's like sweet little angel that have to live in harsh cruel world called Tamriel that makes me want to adopt them? Just look at her! She's so sweet! Wait, why you look familiar? Wait, you twins? No, 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 don't tell me they only make one child asset. <sighs> Awkward conversations sometimes happen in this game. For example, in mission where I need to infiltrate Talmer Embassy, I met with Yal Balgruf's tort that I met more than once. Yet when I start talking with him, it's like we're first met here. Like what? 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 And and the thing I find most hilarious is when I'm at Riften inside building called Bunk Bed talking shit about her aunt right next to her? I swear like what the fuck? And then why Skyrim have top notch wood cutting animation but a fucking horrible mining animation? How? As the thing that was a necessary activity connected to a smithing skill, why mining had so bad animation? Are you trying to make animation for man to mine an ore or to excavate an artifact? Why the animation looks so weightless and too careful to mine the ore? For God's sake, it's an ore, okay? You're gonna melt it anyway into a bar or something. I don't know. Heck, even the first Monster Hunter game in PS2 looks more believable in their mining animation, even though slightly hyperbolic than this shit. This. Lastly, the music. Ooh Where do I need to start? Okay, the music gives some great context how to feel in this game, like giving some soothe of calmness while exploring during the day. and feeling of journey into the loneliness during the night The spread of joy and happiness when visiting the tavern. In 
inside the dungeon feel threatened as you walk into the unknown? And it really did give strong sense feeling as you fight the battle. And do I really need to tell you what to feel during this music? In the end, I understand Bethesda's decision to make this game to death. Even vanilla games still enjoyable to play. Heck, even with more accessibility on console you are choosing, from last gen PS3 to PC, even Switch. And don't forget the one who made the great service for this game that make this game still playable today. The mod community. 
those people spend their time to make this game more enjoyable and can be customized for each person from increased immersion, addition to new assets, or even replace anything you deem unpleasant to see from texture of an object or even the character so sexy you want to leave your SO, girlfriend, wife my last world would be the Elder Scrolls 6 are going to have huge problem managing people's expectation, especially what happened to Bethesda lately. Anyway, what do you guys think? Tell us in the comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.